I truly hope each and every one of us are celebrating life because isn't it all that about to celebrate life per se. So as I speak with you today, I would just like to remind you, I speak from the heart, I speak from inspiration, and these words are not just for you, for me, and we will all discover together what goes on from this point forward. Um, this song was beautifully placed. I didn't pick it. Spirit picked it, or Spirit represented picked it for us, because this is definitely something that keys in with the thoughts that are being provided to share with us all at this time period. So how many of us can clearly remember last time you ever stepped out in the rain and just enjoyed it? And we were just having this beautiful conversation with one of our friends. Growing up, I will share some parts of my journey. Growing up in India, um, I would call ourselves to be from low middle income group from the category of life. But life was great because we always celebrated life with whatever we had. Our parents, our family, our community all just lived together and we all celebrated life from a many different perspective. But what one thing was beautiful was whenever it rained, there was something beautiful about the rain is I would run out on the streets or on the balcony we had a small balcony and we would stop up all the drain pipes and all the water <coughs> collecting it before it gets into the house. And we would just stomp and play in, in the water, in the rainwater. And sometimes we'd get to go downstairs and play in the courtyard. And every child would come along and just play. <coughs> the raindrops, the playfulness, the sound of rain. There's some magic in it that I cannot replace, nothing can replace. And I was celebrating life just this morning because I had a choice to make. Should I stay here for five more minutes or just go out and get ready and head to the church? And I do, just in that brief moment of recognition, take myself back as, it's not hurting me. Nothing's going to go wrong if I get wet. So what? <laughs> right? Not a big deal. It's just rain. And as I stepped out, out of my house, that beautiful memory flooded just right in. Just came, came so close that it was real. And I enjoyed every bit of the raindrops that were falling on me. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of us that really don't know what it feels like to be out in the rain. We're missing out on life. We're missing out on that connection with nature, connection with the gift of God. It is the gift of God. We need to learn to celebrate life a little bit more. Just adding more to this story, I had to bicycle to school. We didn't have a public transportation. Our school buses were for premium families that can afford to pay for private school buses. And some of us pulled up in a rickshaw, and we, the rickshaw guy, pedaled along, and we would just have fun. And sometimes the rain coming back from school was great enjoyment because if we got splashed, it was not a big thing. We were going home, we'll get cleaned up. And we always look for a car or a truck to come by and just make a big <laughs> wave of water and just have a great fun with it. So as I grew up to be independent, as a, as a teenager, I had a, my own bicycle. And I would love to bicycle in the rain. And I would love to bicycle in the rain because I could splash somebody else. <laughs> just. Just from the matter of celebrating life, what a simple enjoyment, you know, just pedal and lift your legs and just let the wheels roll and take you from one place to the other. We're getting a little too busy and a little too preoccupied. We don't know how tangible and beautiful life can be. Starting on to the month of December and up to this point, I'm pretty sure a lot of us are feeling that chaos, that stress of the holidays that come into play meeting demand, meeting expectation, getting to be ready, and whatnot. Even though those moments are enjoyable, they are definitely infused with a lot of stress and pressure. And I have to look back at myself, it's like, what more do I want? I have the gift from the Spirit and God. I have what I need. What more can I bring into my life to have one more thing that I have to manage? And I've started to look at life at that way. I have everything that I want. I'm blessed with everything. I'm celebrating life just the way it is, nothing more, nothing less. I'm learning 
to be happy with what I have in this very moment of my experience. Now, a lot of us within this congregation as we are seated here, you know, in your auric field, there is a lot of evidence of gratitude in each and every one of you, being thankful of your connection to your own self. Please take it outside and share because that is the magic that you can share in this holiday season, so to speak. Now celebrating life and to be able to dance in the rain has a little bit more deeper meaning for me. Uh, when I look from the scope of our religion, our philosophy, and the history of where we were and where we are today. There was a point in our time that our religion, in, back in the days, was going through a very heavy scrutiny of mischief, playfulness, or people are not doing, they're just making things up. So there was a lot of trials and tribulations through our religion, historically speaking. And as those people that we think of the pioneers of our religion that have started to evoke the fire within this religion to be a big spreading religion at that time, had to go through the challenges of life to be questioned by people, questioned by other religions, questioned by media and newspaper to testify and test them if they were legit or not. And they had to learn how to dance in the reign of those challenges. Even to this day and age in 2018, our religion of spiritualism is still under a lot of scrutiny just because the tangibility that is so beautiful is not right in front of our eyes to be able to touch and feel and palpate it. There is no one book that says this is the way it is because our religion is based on free will and free choice and we emphasize on personal responsibility in a big way. That is the anchor within our religion. So we are still getting scrutinized and those that are stepping up to be on the higher pedestal of scrutiny are aware and confident that they have the ability to dance in the rain when there are questions, there are fiery situations and when there are challenges in front of them. How do you see yourself to be? Do you have the ability to keep your head up high and walk through the challenges of life? That is one more way of saying, I know how to celebrate life no matter where it is and what it is giving to me. I have the ability to walk and be firm on my own two feet and to be able to say, yes I can. I will make through this regardless of no matter what's going on. Some of our life experiences through our natural laws allows us to just blossom and become even more stronger and beautiful than we are. Should we choose to go that route? Not every situation can be a true failure by definition. Even a failing situation or a failing aspect of life has the ability to nurture something within us that leads us to a great sense of a aha moment and discovery. How many of us in, in this space are avid gardeners? So we all know, you know, if, if a limb is broken, <coughs> if a tree is damaged, if you let it be in its own space, it will come back unless it's dead at its root. My mother had a beautiful green thumb, and everybody, the little affluent people in the neighborhood, if they would do their rose clippings, and they would do their plant clippings, she would send us to us, she says, go find the limbs that are the size of your pinky finger, and bring them home. And she would just go through, clip them up, tear them up, clean them up, stick it in the mud, in the pots and pans, and then she would water them, and plant them, and nurture them, and talk to them, and feel them, she had a language, she had a magic of her own, and they were thriving, they would come alive. The pathos that we buy in Lowe's and Home Depot and other stores for $5 a pop, in our culture there is thing, you don't buy pathos, it's called a money plant over there. And you have to steal 
or break off a limb and bring it, then it thrives more. I don't know where the logic came from, but celebration of life was just as simple. Sometimes you would just find mother walking back to the house from church, and she's got a row of pathos, or she's dragging a limb with her. A bougainvillea is there, and she would come home and trim it up, stick it in the ground, water it, and then TLC, and it comes to life. There is a lot of learning that I didn't understand what was going on because I was, you know, just like an average child, playing and just messing around and just being a child. But as I said today, there is so much learning that was each, in each and every experience within our household that I can recognize now. And I'm sure we, we all have gone through something similar in your own unique way to understand. You know, what, what mother and father or grandma and grandpa was doing in their own way was silly at that time, but it's still so valid and so real that we can still apply it and make it work. Celebrating life is what it's all about. The holiday season of celebrating Christmas is nothing but a pure magical formation of everything becomes so beautiful all at the same time. But it doesn't become beautiful by itself. It takes nurturing, it takes coming together, it's take, taking a unified choice and action to move things forward. I mean, Times Square at this point didn't turn beautiful on its own. How many people contributed so many hours of work to make it look the way it's looking today? So collaborativeness can turn a simple life into a life that is celebratory. So within our natural laws, there are so many of them at this point. No one natural law exists on its own. You have to have two or more natural laws to come things to life. There's always polarity. Everything goes back and forth. But there's also a sense of magic within that is, can I do everything by myself? So picking up my thoughts from just last last weekend as I gathered myself together and I realized we have so become such a unitary society and we're heading towards that isolating ourselves more and more from knowing how to deal with people unless it's business unless there is a manipulation is going on we really don't know how to come and sit across the table and just have a simple conversation we just have no idea are we celebrating life just by running into somebody and be able to pick up from that point forward. It's a beautiful space that God, the Spirit, our loved ones have left here for us. Are we honoring and celebrating the life that they have left for us to continue? There's so much more going on in the universe that we are just can be appalled by it or come as a community and build it up to where it needs to be, where when we leave, we leave a world slightly a better place for our next generation than what we are experiencing right now. Or we can be an ostrich, stick our head in the mud and not do anything and expect things to change on their own. Celebrating life is such, you have to celebrate your good, bad, worse, painful moments all alike. You cannot just pick and choose to celebrate this or celebrate that. Those experiences that we are receiving are there for a reason. How many of us have gone through trauma in some way, shape, or form in our lives? Emotional, physical, financial, mental. I'm sure all of us will raise our hands some way, somewhere there. Now, I would like to recognize from my own viewpoint sometimes that trauma is truly traumatic and we have to embrace it as such but most of the time that trauma has the ability just like that broken limb to come up with a new shoe a new limb to thrive on maybe better than what it was taking a whole new meaning and definition to life that trauma has the ability that challenge has the ability the sour life experience has the ability to just build within ourselves and blossom in a whole new way. But we have to celebrate life no matter where we are. And 
this is the time period where we need to celebrate the gift of healing amongst each other. That's a big thing. There's a very deep-seated place. But this season calls upon family, calls upon community. This is not an isolated season of celebration. And within that, there are so many fragments of our family and friends that could use healing, including ourselves. We just cannot give, give, give. At some point, we are at the recipient stage. And we need to learn to receive that healing for ourselves as well. So among the precious materialistic objects that you're finding for your friends and family, that you consider them close to you, what about those that are friends and family but need the building of the bridge of healing between you and them? What about that? Do you have the strength and the courage to celebrate life from that precept? Maybe you have, maybe you don't. Maybe I have, maybe I don't. But at the same time, the life, the spirit within us, the divine within us, the God within us, is just waiting for us to take that half a step and say, let me pick up this notepad, write a note, give him a call, do something about it that nurtures and opens that doorway to healing. It doesn't have to be resolving right in that moment, but you start from somewhere. And when you start, that is a celebration of life itself. A new life between that relationship that will be built from that point forward, not what it was back then. We are giving birth to thoughts and emotions on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And with each and every thought and emotion, we have the ability to build ourselves and people around us or take ourselves down and take others down. So it's a choice. And I welcome each and every one of us to celebrate life from our own two shoes, from our own journey. So when it rains, shines, storms, or is as beautiful as it gets, we know how to celebrate life. Thank you for being here.